Wi-Fi exposure. More dangerous to kids than previously thought. Duh. Wi-Fi, television waves, radio signals, cell phone signals. The world getting smarter and smarter from communication to smart homes to everything in between. We gotta make sure all this stuff is safe, right? People still question and general knowledge of the subject is really limited. You still hear old people all the time afraid of cell phone radiation. Will we get brain tumors from using cell phone? Is Wi-Fi slowly irradiating us or something worse we don't even know about yet? And that's why Waste Time is here to answer the question, are Wi-Fi and cell phones slowly killing you? Now, it sounds like a serious question, but let's be honest, the short, simple answer is no. You're fine. This stuff isn't harmful. We'll be fine. But there are some questionable things within there where you dig deeper. Let's let's take a deeper look as to why this actually works the way it does. The biggest reason people are safe is frequencies in which your devices communicate. For example, your Wi-Fi router runs at around 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. Your light bulb, on the other hand, runs at about 400 to 700 terahertz. So the way it stacks up, your light bulbs in your house are far closer to giving you cancer than Wi-Fi is. Non-ionizing radiation is like a collective term for several different types of radiation which aren't harmful in low dosages and without long-term exposure. Some examples of non-ionizing radiation include microwave, radio waves, ultraviolet, visible light, and most importantly, Wi-Fi and low-frequency radio waves. On the flip side, UV light, X-rays, gamma rays, and all particle radiation from radioactive decay are regarded as ionizing, just as some perspective. Ionizing radiation that can give you cancer starts at around 750 terahertz, but even then, our skin blocks it until around 1,000 terahertz. The World Health Organization actually did a study of electromagnetic frequencies and its health effects in 1996. Now, I know that was quite a while ago, but it's still a pretty definitive study. So far, the full frequency range, anywhere from zero to 300 gigahertz, have not shown any adverse effects. There are more people paying attention to this than you probably think. And to reiterate, mainstream devices from bright lights to cell phones to anything you'd really encounter isn't pushing enough anything to cause any change to human DNA. One of the only ways for the damage to occur to humans is to enable and push a massive amount of power into electronics so that they overheat the stuff inside, which causes breakdowns in cells when the body can't cool them fast enough. But thankfully enough, this is why things like the FCC exist, to have such regulations in place. There are many levels that exist to prevent a scenario like this from happening. Modern devices are designed, like I said, to not even come close by a mile to causing any harmful damage. But what about some unforeseen consequences? You know, the human race is always learning from its mistakes, asbestos, uh, we didn't realize how bad certain things were used for growing food were until some harm was already done. Done. But thankfully, there's miles and miles of cancer research, and while the code of cancer isn't entirely cracked, mankind has years and years of statistics in cancer incidents to back them up. Radios, satellites, microwaves, and even cell phones, according to records and adjusted to account for advances in medical research, rates haven't increased at all. There are some people out there, though, that claim that Wi-Fi signals do have an adverse effect on them. However, the majority of the scientific consensus there is that this is just a placebo effect or something that's just in your head. There have been a lot of clinical tests on this and the effect of Wi-Fi on people, and while some people may have some certain conditions, the majority of the results of any types of complaints about Wi-Fi are completely unfounded. You should Google some research of this stuff because the findings are actually pretty funny. But in terms of anything that uses Wi-Fi or cellular waves in your house, device makers focus on something called SAR, that's Specific Absorption Rate. In the United States, the level of absorption for radio frequency radiation is limited to 1.6 watts per kilogram of body mass. Which, like I keep saying, there are a lot of things in place to keep anything from ever harming us. What is actually happening, and don't let it freak you out, is like when you're talking on your phone, it's essentially heating up your face very gently. So yes, there are things that are happening, we can't deny that, but it goes back to what I said earlier about the frequency rates and the fact that no ionization is taking place. So it really isn't doing anything, it's not doing any damage or change to your DNA, it's just gently heating up your skin, which still sounds freaky. But remember, like I said, something needs to ionize before any damage can be done. Cell phones have a signal strength anywhere between one and three watts compared to a microwave oven in your kitchen that typically produces over a thousand watts. And a microwave is still considered safe and not even close to the level. So again, like I said, cell phones and the Wi-Fi energy they produce don't even really come close. So in conclusion, you're pretty much fine. Don't worry about it. I don't wanna freak you out, but there are more things in nature and the everyday world that can actually kill you and irradiate you or give you cancer. Anything from breathing to absorbing sunlight to the atmosphere, but you probably know that already. Regardless, we do wanna hear what you guys think down in the comments. We hope you learned something because we're not scientists here, to be honest, but we like to have fun explaining things. So let us know in the comments. Do you ever feel like a Wi-Fi signal in your house is, is hurting your brain? Or do you think your CD player is giving you radiation poisoning? Let's talk about any of that stuff down in the comments below. If 
you don't know, we're a young channel over here, so clicking the like button and subscribing helps us out a ton for more sorts of weird infotainment type videos every day. But as always, thanks for checking us out, thanks for learning something, and we'll see you guys next time.